let's say we're thinking about buying some shares and the price is currently at $11.30. We're just thinking about buying those shares. Have we bought them yet? No, we're just thinking about it. Now that you are aware of put options, you know when you're buying a new car or replacing your car, whether it's a second hand or whatever, it's new to you, you know how it always makes sense to get the insurance in place first before you purchase the car or drive it out of the, the lot? Same thing here. So, the first thing you would do is actually purchase, you might do, is purchase some put options. So what I'm going to propose to you is just an example, you don't have to do any of this obviously, I'm not recommending that you necessarily do it, but I'm just going to share some concepts with you. Well, what, what I could do is I could buy a 12 month put option with an exercise price of $11. So strike price and exercise price, same thing, okay? So $11, I'm buying a put option, put, and I'm actually buying this one. Now let me ask you, how long is it valid for? 12 months. So isn't that equivalent to insurance then? Okay, it's valid for 12 months. And how much are we paying for it? A dollar fifty. So I'm going to put minus one fifty because that's what we're paying. Okay. So that's the first part of the scenario, using the protected buy right. The second one is next we could actually purchase the shares, and the shares are at a price of eleven thirty. Now there's some complicated reasons why we've chosen that particular exercise price. By the way, these exercise prices, we don't have. Um, we don't create them, they're, they're actually in bands in certain spots that are made available to us through a company called the Options Clearing House. They administer all of the options market, because remember we've got the share market and we've got the options market. So these, this, this organisation manages what happens there. Between the two companies, they say that for any shares that are above say $10, these exercise prices are normally in increments of 50 cents. So, 11, so it'd be $10, $10.50, $11, $11.50, etc., etc. And below $10, they're in smaller bands, and then below $5, they're in smaller bands again. Okay, that's how it works. So, this $11, we would have looked it up, and I'll show you how to go and get information about this later on. We looked up and said, what is the closest put option in terms of exercise price to the share price that we've got at the moment, and how much is it? And then we would we would purchase that one. Okay, next we would buy the shares. And then finally, what is the thing that we now know that we should be doing if we bought these shares? We could write calls. Well done. Well done, Joe. So we could then write calls and once again we would pick an exercise price that was available to us. In this case that is immediately above the share price. So call and we would sell these ones. And for that we would receive some money, wouldn't we? And in this case, let's, let's say in this example, we'd be receiving 50 cents. Now, 50 cents is possibly a bit on the high side, but you get the concept. Yep. All right. So we're receiving 50 cents. <clears throat> now, when, so basically what we've got is a scenario where we've insured our, our shares by purchasing this put option, and then we're getting income from it by selling these call options. By the way, th this call option is valid for how long? One month. One month. One month. One month. But the put option is valid for? 12 months. Fantastic. Now, whenever you use a put option in this manner to ensure a share portfolio, it's called hedging. It's called hedging. Okay? Now, let me ask you. If we didn't have this put option here, what is our maximum risk on these shares? $11.30. Because they could go from $11.30 down to zero. However, with in having the put option, our risk is minimised to only the difference between these two prices. Because remember, if the share price goes down, you can still sell it for eleven dollars. Yep. So you can, you can the most you can lose there is, is thirty cents. However, you've also paid for the put option a dollar fifty. So your risk, instead of being eleven dollars thirty without the put option, is now reduced to only. $1.80, which is the 30 cents there, plus how much you paid. Okay? So it's a big difference in the amount of risk. Now let's examine this investment. Now we paid $1.50 for the puts, didn't we? For the put options. That limited our exposure to only 30 cent loss per share. Okay. Now, 
However, that's valid for 12 months, and we are selling or writing one month call options. Now, let us, let's assume all things being equal, the perfect scenario, and that would be that over the 12 month period, you would collect numerous amounts of 50 cents, wouldn't you? In fact, you could get how many of them? 12 times it. Yes. Six dollars worth. Okay, here we go. Well done. Fantastic. So at this rate, it means that our hedge will be paid for in what, in what amount of time? Three months. Okay. Now bearing in mind, that would be a perfect scenario, and is that realistic? No, because share prices don't just go that way, and you don't just keep getting 50 cents on the sideways trading share anyway. But you get the, you get the principle. Yeah? So, in other words, if this put option is valid for 12 months, and we've, within the first three months, we're going to recover the cost of our, of our hedge, uh, you know, it might be four months or five months if this was less, obviously. It means that the balance of whatever is remaining up to the 12 months is absolutely pure profit from the call premium. In other words, the insurance is paid for. Okay, good.